Right. <laughs> uh, first, first on the hit parade is the uh, requirement that the uh, ANS been asking for an ordinance uh, regarding chickens and the chickens within the city. Chickens? Raising chickens and uh, raising, having grubs. Well, we permit bee. chickens now, mm -hmm. it's just we have no rules for them when they do have chickens. So. Chickens and bees? I don't know why I don't want them, but they do. Yeah. Yeah, the, the ordinance as, it writ, as it's written doesn't address bees. It does address chicks and uh, some other birds and other small domesticated farm type animals. And it does allow them, but it, it's fairly vague. Uh, so I think what the zoning department code enforcement wants to do is, is have something that's a little more involved than what we have now. So it allows people to, to have these have either as pets or to, for eggs. In the future. Okay. Yes. In the book here it says as long as they're fly tight, rat proof, fly tight, and they have to keep up on the crap. Yeah, there's yeah, there's things like boost have like a booster. Yeah, you want to receive a booster. You don't right. want that, you don't want those at all. You do not yeah. want boosters. Right. So we would have to say well, that. yeah, bees is a different thing. Well, I'm just gonna lie, we are not not care about bees. No, we don't have anything about bees. No. There we go. Do you have a recommendation, Ann? Yeah, he, I am um, gave Zach an ordinance that the only thing that would be different, because we're going to keep all the things that you were saying in it, um, would be the number that you could have on a lot, depending on the size of the lot. And the enclosure that it's going to be in um, would, would have to meet certain requirements to keep the chickens, as well as the neighbors and everyone else uh, happy. Do we have an issue? I, I have a lot of people calling me and they want to have chickens, but I can't tell them how to have them right now. Okay. I say yes, you can, but they can just run a month, I guess. So if I don't. we'll have the ordinance in our box to read for the next meeting. Right? Yeah, if, if we can come to language that we both like before then, then it will be in the box for the next meeting. Okay. That's Mainly just regulations on how to keep them. Yes, and, and how to many make sure that have. the numbers don't get too large, that you have any sort of boarding or kennel issues as well. Okay. All right. Next. All right. Next on the hip raise, do we need to address the uh, garbage collection fees? Mm -hmm. The well, our the costs are going up significantly, and our rate is staying level. So um, you've got in the last. We've got a large increase that, uh, coming up in 2017, and you've got uh, in the next 16, I mean, 17, 18, you've got three and a half percent increases each year. Uh, so you're going to you're, you're going to get to the point where you're um, you're not covering the costs. So well, my suggestion is, and you know, I, this is just I'm throwing this out for discussion, is that um, if you don't raise your your fees to cover your costs now. You're going to be further behind the eight ball, further on down the line. Um, as just a ballpark number, looking at the numbers, and I can provide you to you. Um, I'm looking at with the commercial toters and bags, a two dollar a month increase for those two groups, and for the residential toters and bags, uh, in order to cover our our expected costs going up, we need to have nine dollars a quarter it's a large jump but it's what i mean i've played with the numbers and played with numbers I'm trying to get the smallest impact over that time period and that's what i thought nine dollars a quarter mm -hmm. that's 36 sure. months a year yeah it's about two and a three dollars a month for yeah three dollars a month for the for the house i don't know two dollars for commercial yeah, two dollars. Well, there's a, the commercial amount of money that you, you collect to cover your cost is less. When was the last rate increase? I would imagine in what 13. When we implemented the new deal. Right. But what was our agreement with them? I thought we had an agreement. With them. We yeah. do, and 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 we do have an agreement with them, and and I think the agreement. We agree to the incremental increases per year. It's a five-year contract. Right. Incremental increases a year. And we, if, if I remember correctly, 
we kind of we expected that we were going to have to do something with an increase, but that's a lot bigger than I expected. What? Well, again, I mean, you can do it. I'm trying to. You have two schools of thought. You can raise it lower, a smaller amount now, and then come back again in 2017 to readdress it. Are you talking about the contract expires 20, 2018? 2018. Yeah, this well, is you're talking about $9 a quarter by the end of the contract? I uh, for the for the remaining yes, so twenty eighteen. Through twenty eighteen. We can't incrementally get to nine dollars by the end? Oh. It's up to, I mean like I'm, you know it's it's a, a trade off. You want to go through and right now if you do the increase you're good for the next three years. Or you can go back and look at it each year. It depends on how badly you want to you know, either way people don't like an increase, I understand that. But also, either way, you've got to cover your costs. So, you're hoping to get to that three dollar increase by the end of the three years. Are you banking on? Is that because you're going to get three dollars for the first two years too? Yeah. And that'll cover. Or three dollars for the you first two. Do a dollar a year. No, no. What, what, I mean? what I'm looking at is 2018, the last final year of contract. You need to have the three dollars to cover. Your cost on that year. On that year. Yeah. So that's that's really not, not first two years. No. I mean, I, I, I'm not looking at it that way. I'm basically looking at what you need to do to, to have your cost covered in 2018. So if you did a dollar a year. I would do maybe two dollars the first year. I can I can look at it. But if that's what you want, I'll, I'll look at. It. I was trying to, you know, there, there, there's pain either way. Pain is increasing now, or pain is increasing in multiple times. I, I can certainly look at, if you want to look at uh, an increase this year, we'll get you to 2017, I'll get that number for It's really up to council. I don't, I don't have a, a stake in the... Uh, well, you figure with the new contract in 2018, it's going to probably increase that. Uh, well, 2018 is still covered by this, and there, there is a three and a half, almost a three and a half percent increase in that year from 17 to 18. Right. So yeah, well, what I'm saying, Wayne, is at the end of that contract, when you get a new contract, oh, sure. the more likely there's going to be an increase there. Exactly. At least we'll be able to competitively bid that, you know, again. And, 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 and I mean, we knew these, these rates were in here, and we didn't, you know, we, we intentionally didn't have an increase for the first two years. And that's fine. That, that's, again, that's a council decision. I'm just saying at this point, we need to, I mean, my opinion, your opinion is that uh, you need to address this. Uh, well, I mean, we can't. Fact, not covering costs. Yeah, we can't. We have to cover our costs. Right. I mean, again, yeah, I'll, I'll go back. I'll throw some. There's no. We don't have to do anything in the next meeting. I can throw this back again with some incremental adjustments. Throw it out to you and see what you think. I mean, I'd rather see an incremental adjustment. Oh, yeah. Thirty-six dollars. Thirty-six dollars a year. Right. No, I know. And right now we're paying. What are we paying? Uh, You're paying uh, two forty a year. Forty-five for four quarter for bags. I'm paying sixty. And sixty is you paying? Uh, I'm paying because I have the tote, so yeah, sixty two times two forty, and you're talking about another thirty-six dollars on top of that. Maybe two sixty or two uh, seventy cents. Yeah, that's that's a big deal. Sure. You know, again, I mean, I'm just going by what your costs are going to go up. No, I understand. All right, we'll come back with some numbers. Like I said, that was the first blush, and uh, you know, I. I didn't know whether you were interested in doing all one time or doing an incremental one. I'm not a fan of doing it all at one time. I don't know how you address it. I'd rather do the incremental one. Hanging, you wrote it. No. So on the last time we did this, we implemented this deal. Each community is different. When I did the last contract I did, we did a blended amount that carried us through for five years. Beginning of the first two years, you kind of over collected. In the last two years, you under collected, but the net result was at the end of five years was zero. That was the point I was getting to. We yeah, did not overconnect no, 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 no. the first two years. I'm just saying that, that was the way we set it up the last contract I did. What the understanding is that the, the net result was zero. Right. But that was not done here. I'll, I'll give Do we know how our part our, our <coughs> compared to surrounding municipalities? Well, I can tell you how, where I'm at, commercial is about $45 a month. Where um, here it's uh, $24 a month. And what about residential? 
Residential, I think, is cheaper out there. I think there it's only 36. They don't have folks in the event. There's 36 a quarter. I guess I'm wondering why our commercial is so low and our residential seems to be. What's Yeah, I don't, I mean, commercial is only, uh, for bags, only 16.5. So, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what the logic behind it was. I don't know if they're, if you make it, it's like the bus, you know, the bus fare, if you raise too much, your bike takes a car, I don't know. Well, can't, that I can't explain. Do you know what the ratio of commercial to residential is? Dollar wise, is yeah, uh, residential is because uh, two thirds of what commercial is. That's why the residential kind of got hit. The whole thing is with the number. Because that's the biggest bank here, by the way. That's also your largest, uh, you know, your largest uh, cost. Mm -hmm. All right, I will come back with some numbers. You said 16.5 of that. Is that stickers are you talking about? No, that's, that's um. I'm not sure how the commercial bags work. I know the toters, they have the totes for commercial, you know. But I'm not sure that, and maybe, I don't know if they, I guess they can put out bags outside their establishment. I know we can, I don't know. I'm assuming they can. Can you put here. the stickers on? That I don't know. Like our stickers are like quarter. Well, I think stickers. we need it's to find out. Is different. We need to find out how the commercial side of it works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you might want to do a higher increase on the commercial side yeah. and a lower increase on the residential right. side to balance it out. I mean, if we're if we're if we're that low on commercial compared to surrounding municipalities and over the top on residential, then we might need to balance that a little bit. Okay. What do you well, guys think? And as far as the bank, you end up being by the right. commercial should be a little higher anyhow because they're raising money. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, Jerry, to your question about the bags, it's so there's only out of the, uh, the million dollars cost, they're thirty thousand so, dollars. Most people have the tent. Right, there's almost no one has bags. So I'm not familiar with that. I want some numbers. Okay. All right, uh, we were approached by um, a gentleman who wants to sell food on the on street sales, mm -hmm. and the Greensburg does it. Some other communities do it. I'm just looking for a council opinion. There's plenty of ordinances out there that will allow it and restrict it, and, you know, keep it to a business area or, you know, downtown area. But if council's not interested, I'm not going to put too much time in there. We missed been approached by a gentleman that wants to um, sell out a food truck. Is this the same one that was at the hospital? Right. They, 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 they. Yeah, and I think the food was good. Uh, I think the hospital just uh, wasn't crazy about it. Competition and the traffic and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Does he just want to park it in one spot or does he want to run it around like a roach coach? Well, I think he wants to park it in one spot. Sorry, that's what we call it. That's, that's, that's what they're called. No, that's okay. That's a, uh, I think he wants to park it in one spot. I think if he would do it, or <laughs> you'd want to limit it to a certain area, like the, the downtown area. Well, the downtown area has a lot of restaurants and everything now. Sure. Right. Like to see my concern is exactly that. I mean, we, have, we have tax paying businesses that have invested in the downtown. So by allowing this, are we taking revenue away from our tax paying business? Oh no, you don't pay a fee. Yeah, but I mean, is this fee going to, you know, equal? And that's my concern. Yeah. I mean, anytime, sometimes, you know, in an area, and I understand your concern, sometimes in an area when you bring additional food, it also brings additional people shopping. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I mean, it could be like like the kiosk at the mall. Mm -hmm. They don't pay any less. They pay less, but per square footage, or if they have it, a store in size, so you could kind of look at it. That yeah. I mean, you would have to pay. Oh yeah, he would pay a fee. I mean, it's it's, it's again, we have to. We don't have a fee structure set up for that. No, we have to we have to create one. Yeah, we business privilege tax on mm -hmm. those lines. <coughs> yeah, and again, like I said, you probably want to limit it to a certain area. Uh, you certainly would like to keep it, if I'm mistaken, more in the downtown area. But. So, remember, how, many more, how many more food trucks will attract? Well, you can limit that. And you can do that to you. Uh, you can limit the number, you can limit the location. Yeah, we would probably have to license it. 
they would have to apply for a license, they'd have to get all their ducks in a row, sure. and if they've shown that they've complied with the code, if we have the licenses available, we would you know, distribute them accordingly. Yeah, yeah again, um, you know, it's another different than liquor license, is another license, you limit the number. Yeah. So we'd be responsible probably to update or check to make sure that it's uh, food codes and everything was off the standard. He would have a food vendor license in right. current health. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. He, he would be yeah. treated as a restaurant, just be on meals. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's up to you. the council if you if you think it's worth pursuing. We can look at it. If you don't, <laughs> I mean, I think yeah. it yeah. is. Some of things are famous in New Orleans, New York, Chicago, places like that. You could be opening up a, 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 an interesting opportunity for right. not only him but others yeah. to have like you go into a city and that's a big thing and you know as long as he paying fairly to the city the same as the other ones who are paying their taxes and their fees by being in a building he's bringing people in he's paying his fair share he could open up he could bring five more people with them in similar opportunity and then you have an extra how many people milling around because they like that. But call Sue. Call right, call somebody in Greensburg and see what they have, see what they do. Is anybody there? Actually, yeah, I can talk to Sue. But, uh, actually, this gentleman also, they've changed, recently changed their wording, but they, he, used to, he, he was also a vendor there. And I, I work in Greensburg and I never see him there. I know. I mean, I'd, I'd be curious to what, I mean, you tell us in Greensburg, but... I think we really have to look into a drug with the way the streets are set up in Lake Road, too, where do you put them? Yeah. You know, you already have people pulling over to the left with their blinking lights on all the time just to deliver the businesses. Yeah, you may want to limit them. I mean, I guess I worry line. about things like, you know, if, if a business, like, like if you have a tax-paying restaurant in town, not only are they paying their taxes <coughs> in their building, but they're also, you know, we're also getting a wage for the employees that are working there. You know, how do we make sure we're? Yeah, but we would like if, if a new business is going to open up in a building, we wouldn't tell them. Would we welcome new business? Right, but again, how do we make sure that we're not that they're paying the same kind of tax things? Like, if 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 a restaurant opens up and hires people to work there, we get the we get the benefit of the um, wage tax. Mm -hmm. Would we get the wage tax from the people that work there? Probably not. You know what I mean? Be wherever his, his headquarters is. Like if he's based out of, you know, I don't know, Timbuktu, sure where do his wage taxes go? So I just want to make sure that we're not hurting our existing businesses. It, it's one thing if he moves into a building here and he hires employees and all that kind of stuff. As long as we're, as long as we're every, everybody's on the same playing field. I just yeah, I don't I think that you just have to look into that. Yeah. Look at it. It's something that we, you know, we, the gentleman approached us. And I'm not opposed to it. I just think we need more information, like okay. access. Well, anyway, before we did anything, look at anything, I wanted, I, if council was adamant about not wanting it. Oh, no, I'm not adamant. I mean, I wasn't going to bother wasting anybody's time. Yeah. I just don't want to make sure we're not getting them an unfair advantage over a restaurant that's only here. Right. Well, I mean, people have to be equal, you know. Not equal in dollar amount. They're going to have less square footage, or however they're assessed. But I think that. Well, hopefully they'll bring in something to that you don't have. Yeah, it's giving you every place a choice to eat, whether it be McDonald's, whether it be Subway, right. whether it be Wendy's, whether it be up here at the Art Center. Or, you know, it's just another choice of place to eat. I mean, do you want to go eat at the Art Center every single day? Okay, you maybe go there two, three days a week, go hit the vendor one day a week, then you go hit the Subway one day a week. Yeah. And then your point about the parking is important. I mean, I think that maybe the point is to try to locate it within the parking lots, you know, spot the parking lot so that he's not going to have. That's not going to, if he's parking in the parking lot across the street, he's not really directly impacting the art of Francesco because they're on the block. You know, people are going to walk the block to him. So, I mean, he's not like in their face. I think what he might be looking for is like he's doing right now at the, the hospital. You know, maybe one day at the hospital, maybe one day down at uh, Standard Steel, maybe one day at Lake Trope Steel. Mm -hmm. Well, that stuff, if it's Standard Steel or Lake Trope Steel or whoever allows him 
on their property, he doesn't need a yeah, vending license. Right, and the, and the reason why this all happens is the ordinance doesn't allow commercial activities to take place on a public right of way. So technically, he's, he's not permitted to do that. Uh, so if, if we did anything here after we did the investigation and found something, if it was something that we liked, then we would have to have an ordinance amending that section of the code, um, providing this exception, and then we would have to have a full ordinance regulating it however we saw fit. Right. So it, it, it seems like we have a couple tiers here. First, we need to do more of an investigation as to you know how we would treat it similarly to other similarly situated businesses that are brick and mortar rather than um, on wheels. And then if it's something that we want to go forward with at that point, then we could just you know make a motion to have you start drafting the ordinance so if that's something that you guys would like to do. Well, first, first was there, if you're interested. Yeah, look into it. Yeah. Okay. That's um, all that happens. Well, how about like a, a hot dog cart or something? Yeah. I, can, I know a friend and gentleman has one. He's like, did they come busy? <laughs> <laughs> he actually works, does the use of the green room. Or does the green room. And that's not why I'm, I'm pushing this. I asked this question, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of thought that was going to be. He was, he was pretty interested in it. Yeah. And he seems to be, I mean, he was, he was trying to, I think it's a valid, a valid question if, if council's interested, we can look into it. If they weren't interested, if you all weren't interested, then the answer to him is no. All right, next on the hip right is the, uh, the city to sponsor the reality tour. Beth wanted to speak about that. Well, right now, the reality tour is, um, we do the tour of the building. The police department's involved in it. I'm co-director of the tour. Uh, we have Chief Boomer. We have some of the officers that are there every month. Um, we are trying to figure out, um, we're going into our third year now, and it's not for profit. So we do charge $5 a person to come to the tour, only if they are not on um, free lunches or, or reduced lunches. Um, also, Magistrate Phillips sends some of the kids here in place of a fine. Um, they'll come to the reality tour and do community service. So that's normally a little bit higher of a fee for them, um, but they can work it off through community service through helping with reality tour. So right now we have um, we have a fund that's actually with the Latrobe Foundation. Um, I honestly don't know how it got there, but they were the umbrella. Um, we're underneath their umbrella. We would prefer to have it in the city um, and have financial accountability with the city since we are a part of the city and we use the building and I work for the police department um, and all of our officers also work for the city. So it's money in, money out um, and it would just be like any of the other accounts we have, the National Night Out account, um, the Canine account, um, there'd be accountability, you know, it'd be audited just like it is now and it would go under the Community Relations account where Barb keeps a couple things in that um, account underneath an umbrella and she would keep track of it. So it would just be a matter of, like I said, the, the money that we get from that is just to run the tour. Um, for supplies, for any of the brochures that we pass out, any kind of ink cartridges, paper, that kind of stuff. Is there an issue with the way it's structured now? There is. Um, just because we, in general, everything is done here. We're trying to combine everything into the municipal building. Our address is 901 Jefferson Street. The reality tour, like, like, like I said, we all work for the city but the money's going to the Latrobe Foundation. There were questions about that from some of the people that were donating. They wanted to know why it was going to the Latrobe Foundation, not to the city. Um, and trying to explain it, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> honestly. But they're trying to do The Rotary, um, they're gracious enough to donate the money for the license. So it's sponsored by the Rotary. Um, but like I said, because we all work for the you know, municipality of Latrobe, we have everything here. We just want to keep everything just so right, right now. Here. It's where Latrobe Foundation. Latrobe Foundation. Oh. I mean, we don't really know why. <laughs> Mary Ann Music is our other co-director, and when she was looking for somewhere to put the money originally, before we were really established, and we, we didn't know 501c3. Yeah, we didn't know the stability of the of the program. We didn't know if we were going to be here or not. So she had gone to the school district. We recommended, then it went through there. Is there? Do we know? Is there a problem with switching it around? No. Do we know. There's no you talk problem. to the foundation? Anyone from the foundation? No. No, but that's, I mean, that's, I guess when it was originally set up, and it's only been a few months, um, we were going to use them as the, I guess, the umbrella for our program, but it's, there's no need for it. And I, 
I think we all just feel better if the money was in the city where there's more accountability. We don't know what's donated there. You know, if somebody would send a check there, we would never know. Um, and not saying anything against the foundation that way. Um, just so we can keep track of our records so we know what our spending power is as far as supplies. All right, we need to I don't think they do either. I think We've often used the foundation because we need a 501c3. And I think the other thing about it is, I mean, and I, I, I wouldn't raise the issue of the foundation, but you know, because it is being held in the building, should it be a city sponsored event? Not necessarily, but you know, we do charge other, other groups to use them. So, I mean, that, that's a minor thing. I'm sorry. But well, we'll talk about it. You're not connected to a 501c3. Can people still make a donation? They can, but it's not even. We don't get donations like that. It's a $5 a month. It's just to keep the program going. We don't accept, you know, $500 donations or $1,000. If someone donations. wanted, if someone wanted to give you $1,000 towards the reality tour to keep it going, you couldn't take. We could take it. It just wouldn't be a taxable. It wouldn't be a non-taxable donation. Right. Right. But now you could. Oh, well, the city, you would. You could be. It's a taxable donation. I mean, I would think it actually probably is the foundation. Well, I would think it is. Assuming the foundation. I'm not sure what the foundation's uh, tax structure is under their final one the city. But even that doesn't necessarily mean. In other words, you can donate to a, a, an organization that's a final one for C, But if they're funding, they have to have so much funding going to programs and so much funding going to administration. Otherwise, your grant gift you gave is not tax deductible. Well, let's you let's know, get the, let's well, let's figure out the facts and figure out what it you know what yeah. the, well, why it is the way it is and what happens if we change it and how we change it. All that, all that stuff. Okay, uh, next one is the amendment to the subdivision and land development ordinance. Of, yeah, know, I, I would, we talked about this previously. Uh, you guys gave me to go ahead to, to start working on redrafting the subdivision and land development ordinance because um, if there was a, a distinction between the way uh, we, the way that the definitions are written and the way that we have often thought that it would be is that the council has final approval, the final approval stayed with the planning commission. So that was the, the reason why I started working on it. Um, I sat down and really dug into the ordinance, and I noticed a couple other issues. Um, generally, when you're working with an, an ordinance like this, there's two different tiers of how you're going to proceed as an applicant. A minor development, say for instance, for the purposes of this conversation, a subdivision of less than five lots, and or development of land less than, say, a quarter of an acre. And anything more than that would be a major subdivision and would have increased requirements, different things that you have to show more certificates from architects, things of that nature. Um, the way that the ordinance currently is, is it defines major as being something other than minor, but then there's no definition of minor, so that creates a problem. Um, and then that major is carried out throughout the ordinance, but we have no reference for what's a major subdivision. It's almost everything that's a subdivision or land development is treated the same way, but it doesn't say that. So. What I'm going to need to do is, is to do a rewrite in that regard. And I wanted, before I did that, I wanted your input on whether or not you wanted there to be a different, you know, to have it be a little more streamlined for minor subdivisions and lot developments and a little more um, cumbersome for the major ones that would require different architect and engineering surveying certificates to make sure that it's accurate. So that was one of the questions that I wanted to have you guys put a, give me some input on. Is it, if it's something that you guys would be in favor of having quicker and a more um, involved process, then I can look at similar similar municipalities of, of our size and see how they drew the line and see how I think it would apply in speaking to the code enforcement department. If, is that something you guys would be interested in? Yeah? Okay. Um, the other item that I wanted to address was that the way that it goes through the process is different in every municipality. You have a lot of leeway under the state laws. And is it something where you would like the planning commission to essentially give um, you know give you that recommendation as how it goes? Or would you like the planning commission only to be able to give 
with their preliminary approval after having found that they comply with all of the codes and, and engineering report? You know, is, is it something where you want it to be stringent and to the code before it gets to you guys, or do you want players to, to give you the application <coughs> with a recommendation on, on how they would recommend that you, you go forward with it with the request? I think I would prefer them to give us a recommendation because they're going to spend more time looking yeah. through everything than we are. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, we not that we can't, but. I mean, if you're going to have a planning commission, and that's part of their task. Bring us direct delegation. Okay. I'm on the Murraysville Planning Commission, and that's what we do. Is that we have to go back to them, and then back to us again, right? Yeah, the, the way that it works is um, they would, the applicant would submit an application. It would go to your engineer to make sure that it complies with all the code provisions. If it doesn't, your engineer will give you a checklist of why it doesn't. It'll go to the planning commission. The planning commission will say, approved, meaning recommended to you guys. Um, not approved, meaning that he doesn't, the, the planning commission does not recommend it, but it would still go to you guys for approved with recommendation or conditions. So you, the planning commission would recommend it to council for approval on the condition that they were, they comply with say items one through 10 of the engineer's report, or they can table it if it's just really bad. So that, that's how that process works. It's on a recommendation standard. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can we do that? Yes, Mr. Miller. Oh, it's uh, zoning. Uh, zoning. Uh, <coughs> we have our zoning committee. How would that uh, affect us? Do we have a zoning hearing board? We yeah. do. Yeah. So that. Uh, yeah. The, um, subdivision and land development wouldn't affect. It wouldn't go through the zoning board. It would stay with planning commission as it is now. They're they're different matters. They handle different. Well, the planning commission uh, approve like uh, building renovations and things like that, and then it goes to the zoning. I mean, we we've, we've had uh, the planning commission hasn't hasn't held too many meetings at all. Well, I mean, if, if there was a variance or something of that nature, it would need to go through the zoning hearing board. But if it's you know if it's just a site, if it's a, a site development or uh, a subdivision that otherwise complies with all the codes, it would just, as it goes now, through the Planning Commission and then to the Council. Essentially, we're going to keep the bubbles. We're just going to change how we're organized. Dr. Parlance. All right. We, uh, uh, number six is the hiring of part-time. We have made an offer to Sherry Henning. She's going to start in May. Uh, she'll be part-time of the transfer station. We had um, probably 25 resumes. We interviewed seven um, good candidates. Uh, she was uh, maybe gave them a typing test, which if they could pass, I wouldn't be able to pass. But yeah, that's now, part of it. Can we do background checks with drug screening? We don't do background with drug screening. We did do, uh, we did check the records, of course. So, yeah. but we don't for math, maybe we never, uh, um, yeah. we never had, had to ask for a uh, they're due on the CDL. We don't know those. Yeah. I don't know any place you can find a job without doing the drugs or anything. What's the application say? Would they block the application? Have you ever been to the kind of hotel here? Yeah, well, they've asked those questions, but I mean, you were saying a drug test or a physical. At what point in time? Well, no, I said, what did I say? A background check and a drug test. Yeah, we don't. We could do a background check, although we've already made an offer, a tentative offer. Well, that's, I mean, we have a police department. We should be doing background checks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First, I thought I was the guy from Georgia. Help us out. Well, <laughs> I mean, obviously, it's nothing in our policy. So it's something that tells me that we need to, we need to put in our personnel policy yeah. going forward. And I don't think it's a now. I don't think it's what the bargaining deal. I don't think we have to negotiate that. No. Pre-employment hiring. Pre yeah. Pre-employment pre hiring. Additional offer. You know, right. You know. And they're and they're and they're are they probationary for a period of time? 45 days. So, um, I mean, I, I just, I just think it's practical. We should have what? We don't, we don't screen. Yeah. Drug screens for. Uh, you know, I've done drug screens. Drug screens. Town has a drug screen. Uh huh. Uh, sewage company does it. Water company does it. Oh, we can, uh, go well, I don't care. I mean, I'm not the, I don't, the I don't, council wanted to uh, thank the uh, city employees thank drug tests. And the, and the council, remember? Yeah. Yeah. 
CDL drivers take it on regular Well, that's the law. That's the CDL lot. driver has to keep up that's with CDL. But I don't, I, I don't, the whole city. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not advocating we do it for this person, but I think we need okay. to visit our, to visit our um, personnel hiring policy, and we need to add it. We should be doing background checks and drug screens on every employee we hire, period. You can't do it randomly look at one contract board. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can start your policy now. I mean, you know, it's. I mean, they're they don't have collective bargaining rights until they're here 45 days. No, there you can make it a conditional one. There's no issue. The contract doesn't stay. And again, we and we even talked about the physical, but we've been never done it in the past. So I'm not so concerned about that as much as just a drug screen. I mean, Price Park and Rex doing it. I mean, there's their drug screen and everybody they hire. You know. Okay. Yeah. Well, going forward, we can do that. I, I, again, it's not an issue with the contract. And how many hours of time do we have? Anywhere from 12 to 24. Now, um, Darla broke the wrist, so, you know, we're, we're kind of scrambling for people. But this person won't be able to fill in for 25 days because they have to get their uh, Waymaster certificate. And we're going to have probably have another two openings coming up anyway. Well, we need them. We need we need to fix our policy. That's not our policy. We can we can create that. We can add. We need to add it to our policy. That's why we have some hiring criteria. Right. Well, the next one's going to be yes, probably. Yes, uh, Has the uh, uh, money, the intake of money, uh, increased, or you know, uh, at the uh, transfer station over the uh, last several years? Or? I should come down. I, we were we had talked about. Years ago, in fact, you know, almost every year we talk about <clears throat> finding ways to increase revenue at the transfer station. Mm -hmm. Now, have we ever done that? Have we ever increased? Well, the only time we increased revenue at the transfer station is we had the ice storm. When we had the hail storm and, and we had a big bump up there. When was that now? 2010? <clears throat> 10, 11, maybe? And we probably had a big increase of overtime in that for that period too. Well, but we made we made so much money in that period. I don't, I don't think we had the over. No, I don't. Because I don't you're, think you're so. the, the transfer station is only allowed to open so many hours a day. So well, how was our income expenses so at the present time for there? I for the transfer say, station. I, I could I could I could not say for sure because I haven't looked at them recently. I think we should. I think they're, I believe they're on budget. Oh, yeah, they're all in the department. You know, budget. they're on budget. Um, but I think our budget, would we budget for that, like, half a million? I know, you don't have the budget there. But yeah, it doesn't, I mean, really, Jim, it's it's kind of a moot point at this at this point, because um, we don't have, right now, we're, with Darla being off, we don't, you know, we're putting other employees up there. We're running shorthanded down here. And the whole idea of hiring a part-timer was so that we didn't have to continuously cover up there on Saturdays with overtime. So um, plus, plus we, we we expect you know that we could have some potential retirements in the not too distant future. Or so we're just trying to prepare for that. But um, we we do need to take okay. a look at the transportation. The biggest thing we were looking at was we were looking at this, this individual was probably going to would need to have a strong contract because as things open up within the city this person is going to probably be in line to go so that was our, our biggest concern but no hey go forward we can drive this anyway that's why i'm in i know i should say that we can, maybe we, we should, should have drug drug test. maybe we should be drug testing our solicitor before we hire him <laughs> yeah. i know better we can make it a condition of the audit job you would say, Eric, he has to be on drugs to want the job. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, last is the uh, designation of an uh, agent, basically for the stormwater reimbursement. They need uh, that to a resolution, and all council have to uh, sign it, designating uh, me as the agent to handle the interaction for the uh, storm reimbursement. And do we think we're going to get the money back? Well, they're, they're talking seventy percent. I mean, you know, I, I don't know what the uh, I, I don't remember the exact total amount of the bill we turned in. Do you know? Yeah, not offense. I was thinking probably around thirty thousand something. I think it was thirty-four. Yeah, I think it was thirty-six. We're looking at twenty-two, twenty-three. I mean, the thing is, we've spent the money. 
Right. If we get back 10, we're ahead. Right, right, right. Makes sense to me. And not all of West Point County is eligible, so I think it, it increases our opportunities to, uh, to get reimbursement. I know. In fact, we have Yes. Yeah. Sir. That probably that helps in on that if I'm not mistaken. Sure. Yeah, then we're down to one truck. Right. So that would help us a lot because bigger crutch than normal two crutches. Yeah. Well, then you had to get the subcontractors to help. Right. So that that also not only do you have trucks down getting repaired, but you have subcontractors costs. Right. So that all helps. Where are we at with that? I mean, we can we order another truck in or? Not yet. We're waiting to get the uh, street sweeper finalized and then we'll start looking at a truck and you know, Mike's, I think Mike's looked at a couple trucks. Yes. Um, maybe going with a 550 and um, we'll see. Not this time. As long as we have when we need it. We will. So, well, it just, uh, it's a matter of, the, the street sweeper is taking longer than uh, I thought it would. What, what's up with that? What's up with the street sweeper? We're waiting for the good is uh, the state has to approve <laughs> Debt because it's over two, it's over how about hundred thousand more? Hundred twenty five. So they stay up the first. We're waiting on their approval. Yeah, we don't need that already. No, no, not that. We have we have the, the, the financing company's rates to cut the check. The we already have a street sweeper sitting in the building over there. We're just we waiting for the state. We can't use it. No. Uh, well, actually, they, it was kind of good because they had they had some problems with it and they came in and repaired. They had check engine lights and things. So. Well, where is it hung up at the state? Where? Just a matter of getting the paperwork filed. From, from? We're going to email them the final things for them. And it should be shortly after that. Which yeah, we're probably a week away from they? Uh, Department of, I forget exactly what the acronym is, but oh, it's okay. like six letters. It's in the oh. state. It's essentially, for our figures, you have to give them debt financing statements to show exactly what your debt ratio is to revenue. And ours is fine. Oh. And it's fine. It's just we yeah. used accounting numbers. We used audited numbers. So our last we used the last year's audited numbers, and they said, well, no, since we're already into the new year, please redo it and use the unaudited numbers for 2015. We weren't comfortable with ahead of time. So that was done. I have them in my file. I made sure that I could submit it by email tomorrow morning. Yeah. So. Yeah, we really just got the audited, the unaudited numbers uh, a few weeks ago, April mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we were first submitted, we didn't even have them yeah. finalized, which is why we didn't use them. Right. So, but they wanted it. They wanted the numbers. So yeah. it is what it is. But the numbers are fine. The numbers are good. Oh yeah. Mike, do you have a game plan to get the flags up and, and kind of things cleaned up downtown? Yes. And yes. Sprucing it up for. Yes. We start having visitors here for the, you know, Mr. Rogers Day and Fourth uh, of July and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that should be starting here, uh, here in May. Um, we we got to assist putting planners up uh, throughout the downtown. Uh, as soon as we get the sweeper, uh, the first thing is get the downtown, the main uh, arteries in the town clean, and uh, line painting would be that next. Uh, probably the uh, the white traffic markings, uh, the yellow. Uh, it depends if we if we can do the yellow. Um, if we have enough time. Oh. Anybody know all the paint paint all over the place? Yep. Sure. Put some traffic lights. Yeah, but they're saying they're not doing that for 2019. That's your engineer out there looking to make sure it's going to be right, and he'll change his mind by 2018 after the third group. And then maybe they use a different color paint? I don't know. I mean, it's... <laughs> they're color-coded for certain reasons, right? No, I know that. I talked to the guy. I talked to the guy that was doing the painting, but it just seems odd to me to be painting in 2016 for something that you're not going to do until 2019. Good paint. Pet dog engineers. Also, one, one quick thing, if, if, if you don't, and, and the council doesn't care, um, we were thinking of contributing a non-budgeted item of $250 to the flyer. Uh, the guys are for the tools. Yeah, I, I got here a, um, a, this is me personally, but the, this letter for the mini gardens. Yeah. $250 is a tool of mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. That that helps and beautifies the city so much. I totally support it. I know, I know a lady who helps plant a lot of them, so. They do a nice job. They do a lot of work. I know. Oh, you're white dad. Oh, she's part of the, the, the uh, master garden for the No, I don't have a problem with it. Just, yeah, it doesn't even worry about being an unbudgeted dad. I resist. Yeah. 
Okay. But it's back to the, the idea that there's going to be a lot of people coming through town that aren't from the area. You know that intersection of Maine and Lincoln? Maine and Lincoln? Maine and Lincoln. Or it's one way. Well, I come down Maine every morning and mm -hmm. every probably four or five times a day. So I'm coming down. I cannot tell you the number of near misses of accidents right there. For some reason, people tend to think from the right-hand lane, they can turn left. And so you continually have people who are turning left from that lane and just missing accidents by a hair. And the other thing that they tend to do there is the people that are going or at the stop signs on Lincoln, they must think that there's a stop sign on Grant or something because cars will be almost at the railroad track and those cars will go. And I'm telling you, I, I can guarantee I almost see an accident every day. And I think there's been a couple of there. And so, like, even just some sort of paint or for a temporary fix, I think it needs a long-term fix, but um, well, thinking about all the strangers coming in, you know, uh, that something. Yeah, and that's even going to be, there's even going to be more of that, maybe, when uh, when we start the bridge stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. But you can talk to, uh, you guys can talk to the chief and see what he thinks. Mm -hmm. Do we have any uh, electronics recycling plan? Yes, uh, June 11th. June 11th, yes. Oh, I two people asked me. <coughs> okay. Yeah, that's going to be held at uh, the stadium again. Does the satellite dish have to go to that? No, it doesn't. Yes. Can I go to regular yes. market? Yes, it goes to the satellite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can bring it The electronics. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What time is that, 8? Uh, 7, well, 8 to 12, yes. Does that include TVs? Yes, TV and electronic. And it was plugged, right? Yeah. 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 What time did you say it was, Mike? Uh, 8 to 12. Because I got to stay, I got to get rid of it. Um, I just want to let everybody know that we have the we have the and I don't I don't whatever I don't care what your political affiliation is but we have the uh, opportunity to host um, what was that two weeks ago now the Arkansas Travelers here um, there were 38 people that came here to kind of blanket the city um, in support of Hillary Clinton and they went door to door and and we had them up here and and. Um, Castle Co Packers was nice enough to donate refreshments for them and, and, and got some chips and pretzels and stuff. And, and then we took them out and they, they went door knocking in town. And, and um, it was fun. And they were here for about three and a half hours and I've been getting nothing but I just got a, um, a thank you card from one of them. They're a group of um, friends of the Clintons that were friends of the Clintons before the Clintons became you know, the Clintons. <laughs> So um, it was it was fun, wasn't it? It was an interesting it was an interesting day. Really really nice people. They they, they do this at their own expense. They, they there's 350 some of them, and um, they just go from whenever either Bill or Hillary are running for something, um, they go and and travel the country for them. And it's really it was really a neat it, it, um, experience. I had the the extreme pleasure today of going to the college as a foundation board member. I was invited to a VIP reception where I got to meet um, Secretary Clinton and, um, and and mentioned her about the travelers being here and she mentioned it in her speech at the, at the college. So it was, was quite an interesting day. Really so, you just never know. You know. I always say as a mayor, and as council members, regardless of our political party, we have to be welcoming to whoever wants to come to Latrobe and showcase the city of Latrobe. Um, obviously, it's no secret that I'm a Clinton supporter, but you know, if somebody else comes in and they're a different party, then you know, we'll we'll welcome them as well because that's our 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 role. I think is 
as council members. We never know who's going to win or who we're going to have to work with, especially at the state level, the state and local level. I mean, it doesn't impact us here in the city as much, I don't think, but it certainly does um, at the state level. So it was fun. So I encourage all of you to, next time we have an opportunity, to, to try to participate. It's an interesting day. Anybody don't have anything? Huh? Don't forget to vote tomorrow. Yeah, please don't forget to vote tomorrow. You know, it's the first time that I can remember when a primary in Pennsylvania actually going to mean something. I mean, when's the last time that, 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 that we, we didn't have a candidate by the time we got to the Pennsylvania primary? So it's, it's um, it, it, whether or not you like politics or don't like politics or who your candidate is, you can't deny that it's really interesting. <laughs> Do you guys have anything on your minds for, um, in particular, that's going on right now? So our meeting will be May 9th. It looks like we'll have a short agenda unless something else comes up. Do you have something else, Mike? I'm sorry about the, we're going to do the, you know, we did the proclamation for Joe at that meeting. But what we're going to do is sometime later on in the month, I'm trying to get a hold of his brother. Uh, we can set up something so that we can have the ceremony at the end. Yeah, and then maybe at the April, maybe at the June meeting, we, we should do something for Mary Pascola too. I think she did. She did. Yeah. She she was an iconic woman in this community. So I'll have a moment of silence for her at the May 9th meeting. But maybe in June we can contact some of her family and maybe do a proclamation for her. Anything else? Okay. Well, I know. I know. Well, we'll just not. We'll just. We'll just Notify one of them. It's up to them to decide who wants to go. Anything else? Anybody? Anybody out there in the audience? Our future president down there. Do you want to say anything? <laughs> <I'm cute. laughs> All right. See you on the night, everybody.